Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Give yourself a round of applause for being here. Thank you. My name is Michelle and I'm from Saudi Arabia. Anyone else here from Saudi? Oh. <laughs> all right, great. Some woo, some woo's nice, nice. So, um, all right, so a little fact about me. How many of you believe that I was the prom king back in high school? A lot of faith. Uh, I was the prom king in high school. Woo! Which turns out is not that great when you've gone to an all boys school. <laughs> Essentially, you're also the prom queen. <laughs> So guys, I don't know if you know this, but people like from Saudi and UAE and the GCC countries, we get accustomed to a certain level of luxury. And we expect it everywhere we go, seriously, you know? So I'll give you an example. I was flying to the US. Anyone here from the US? Great. Uh, you know, by the way, when I, w when I went to the US, people were really nice to me and they were really friendly. Also, they kept calling me Miguel. Maybe that's why. <laughs> so anyways, we landed in, in uh, New York and I saw another confused Saudi. Now I knew he was Saudi, because as Saudis, we have this eternal bond where we just know each other. Also because he had his passport, kept telling, Secures, mate! Secures, mate! So I said, okay, you know, Saudi, Saudi. So I said, I, I told him, just go to the passport control line. And he was like, that's the problem. Where is the GCC line? <laughs> so I told him, Habibi, you're in New York. There is no GCC line. He's like, la, impossible. I will find the airport manager and I will deport him. <laughs> now, I didn't have the heart to tell him that you can't deport someone when you're not in your own country. I think sometimes Saudis, we think that it's like an app on your phone called I Deport, and you like collect points. We're like, Yalla, ma salam, ma bai, khalas, yalla. So, <laughs> so, guys, being Saudi is not easy. <laughs> Don't laugh, I'm still saying the joke. <laughs> Now, let me tell you why. Being Saudi is not easy because there's a lot of negative stereotypes against you that you have to fight. And I make it my mission. You know, I want to change, I want to break those stereotypes. For example, a lot of people assume that Saudis are wealthy, which is exactly why I'm broke. It's, it's not easy, but I'm doing it for a noble cause, you know. Let, let me give you another example. I was, I was speaking to this girl recently, and she was a sophisticated, multicultural kind of girl. She's like half Chinese, half American. We're having a nice chat until she asked me the question, and she said... Does your sister drive? And I said, <clears throat> well, I said, you know, she doesn't have to drive, right? <laughs> she does, are you Saudi? You're agreeing with me. No, I said, she doesn't have to drive. Me and my brother or my dad can drive her, okay? She was like, wow, that's like so typical. It's so Saudi of you. That's what's really awful. Like, what's next? Do you not let her go to work? And I was like, <clears throat> well, she... <laughs> I said she doesn't have to work. I mean, if she needed money, me and my brother and my dad can give her money. And that's when she flipped out. She was like, this is like so typical of you. Like, I didn't believe it until I met like an actual Saudi. That's really awful. Like, how do you even sleep at night? No, generally, I wait till she's done with the insulting until I tell a little, bit of, a little bit, piece of information that I didn't tell her before. I say, by the way, my sister is 12 years old. So <laughs> it sounds like you're advocating child labor, which is so typical, so Chinese of you. Well, how do you sleep at night, huh? Smart Saudi, right? So, <laughs> so I, I like being in Dubai. I've been here for a while. I like that you get to interact with a lot of different cultures, right? Um, for ex one of my favorite cultures to meet is Filipino people. Any Filipinos here? Okay, I can do this joke. So, no, what I like about them is that they have, like, the coolest names is what I've noticed, right? So, I'll give you an example. So, I went to, like, uh, order something, and at the counter, there's an employee that was close to me, one that was far away. The one that was far away had a really strange name. So, I talked to the one close to me, and I whisper, I'm like, man, it must be really strange having a name like Cinderella, right? Now, the person in front of me did not seem amused, which I realized was because their own name was Cinnamon, and I think if your name is Cinnamon, like, nothing sounds weird. It sounds like when they were younger, like eight, their parents were like, what do you want to be called? Cinderella? Sure, we'll allow you to keep it. And then I started thinking, you can't do that with Saudi kids. You can't ask them, what do you want to be named? Because like with Filipinos, it's really innocent. Like they're like, what do you want to be named? They're like, Cinderella, Cinnamon. And they're like, okay, you know, that's, that's an innocent name. That's cool. But with Saudi kids, if, if you allow your kids, if I allow my kids to name themselves, this is how I'm going to introduce my family. I'm gonna be like, meet my youngest, Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> and then
and this is the second one, Abu Danger 2012. <laughs> Finally, my oldest, 0506777946. <laughs> now he knows it's a long name, so he has a nickname. It's BB Pin FF <laughs> FF11742. Last week, we're so proud of him. Last week, all by himself, he deported five people. <laughs> Thanks a lot for listening, guys, and have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>